Imagine a holiday where the only thing you do every day is eat, beach, sleep, repeat. <laughs> wow, this is nice. Hello to his mommy. <laughs> Welcome to Maldives of Thailand called Ko Lipe. Ah, islands. They seem to have a magnetic appeal to just about everyone for all sorts of reasons. Some like the solitude, the tranquility. Some like its pristine beaches, pure white sands. Some just likes the sense of disconnectedness from the hustle and bustle of the big city. There's something inherently adventurous about exploring landmasses surrounded by vast oceans. If you guess where I'm going with this, well, Ko Lipe takes all of these boxes. Yet, for most of you, if I ask you to pick your next island destination for a vacation, I would bet that you'd probably never heard of or even considered Ko Lipe Island. By the end of the video, I hope you get to know more about the island, along with a few recommendations and suggestions on where you can stay and things you can do on the island. First, let's talk about location. Koh Lipe is located at the far southern end of Thailand. So far south, it is actually closer to the Malaysian island of Langkawi than to the mainland of southern province of Thailand. The island itself is merely 2.6 square kilometers in size. That is small, very small. So small that you can basically walk around the entire island on foot. If you have royal feet that isn't designed for walking or just plain lazy, you can still be chauffeured around with what the locals call a tuk-tuk taxi for a small fee. Now, there's no airport here. In fact, I'm sure there's a billionaire out there whose helipad is bigger than this island. To get here, your only option is by ferry or speedboat. The most common options are from the bigger islands of Krabi, Koh Lanta, Phuket Island, or from Sutton Province. Alternatively, you can come from Langkawi Island of Malaysia, which has the shortest ferry ride to get to this island. Great option if you tend to get seasick. Here's a couple of important things to know for your own trip to Koh Lipe. The east side of the island is where the island is most developed. It's where you find most of the hotels, restaurants and cafes. The main beach to the south of the island, called Pattaya Beach, is where all the passenger ferries and speedboats arrive and depart, whether domestic or international. Naturally, it's where you see a lot of boats coming in and out every single day. 
so you may want to take this into account if you intend to stay along the hotels on this stretch of the beach. Having said that, it's also the starting point of the only major walking shopping street where all the retail shops, restaurants, cafes are. So it's always hustling and bustling. Off to the east is the Sunrise Beach. And guess what? It's great for watching sunrise. Great if you're an early person and can actually get up early enough to watch it. It's also where most of the hotels are concentrated. And if it's your first time to this island, I would highly recommend going for a hotel along this stretch of the beach. It's fantastic for snorkeling or just about any kind of water activities, which I will talk about later. Off to the west is the Sunset Beach. And guess what? It's great for watching sunset. It's a lot quieter than the other two beaches I've mentioned so far, and a lot more laid back. Thus, fantastic if you're looking for a very quiet place to relax or stay. Speaking of relaxing, let's talk about accommodation next. So here's the easiest fact to get out the way for accommodations on Koh Lipe. If you're looking for an international brand like an Intercontinental, Four Seasons, Banyan Tree, well, you're not going to find any of them here. It might change further down the track, but for now, you have to stick with boutique local brands. Even on an island of just 2.6 square kilometers in size, you still find over 100 plus hotels and resorts to choose from. The good thing is, the hotels are relatively affordable. Anywhere from just under 20 USD per night to over 500 USD per night for the only 5-star resort on the island. You find the largest selection in the 3-star or 4-star hotel range, generally between 50 to about 200 USD per night. So, with so many hotels to choose from, where should you stay? Let me talk through two hotels we stayed at and our experiences with them. Hopefully, it could help you better decide for your own accommodation as well. The first hotel we stayed at could be summarized as the budget beachfront without the dollar signs. It's called Zodiac Sea Sun Resort, which frankly isn't a catchy hotel name. But it is right on the beach, so there's no complaints there in terms of beach access. Our cabin is actually not that special. The TV barely works. The bathroom is basic. We appreciate that there's a fridge. And we were sort of entertained by the um, neon light on our bed head. Look at that. Don't get me wrong though. The aircon works. The bed is comfortable. And if that's all you care about, it's actually fine to stay in one of these cabins. What is special about Zodiac Seasun Resort is not what's inside, but what's just outside the hotel. It's right next to North Point Beach, which is arguably the best beach Koh Lipe has to offer. For starters, it's a great spot for sunset, with the whole place coming alive with crowds gathering around to watch the last bit of sunlight disappear. When the sun is out, the place is again alive with fire dance shows, entertaining the crowds, including your kids. The solo singers that belch out classic Cantonese classics. It's just a nice place to hang around in the evenings. The second hotel we stayed at could best be summarized as quite luxurious if you don't mind the stairs. Located at the far southern end of the Sunrise Beach, this resort is called Serendipity Beach Resort. The hotel is built over a hill with villas sprinkled all over it from the top of the hill all the way down to the beach. So first thing you're going to notice, stairs, lots of stairs. If stairs ain't your thing, 
you may as well look elsewhere right now. But if it's not a problem for you, this hotel actually features much nicer rooms than the first one we stayed at. Some room features an outdoor pool, which frankly is the favorite part of our stay. It's an excellent place to chill after a hard day's work exploring around the island. And we're about to eat breakfast on the swimming pool in the villa in Kalipi. Yep, breakfast in the swimming pool. If you have an Instagram in the house, be prepared to spend a lot of time here. There's also rooms that feature wide open view of the ocean. Great for snooping around what others are up to if you have a decent zoom lens. The room itself is spacious and decor looks and feel authentic Thai. The bed is comfortable and features mosquito nets to prevent those pesky insects from biting you. Use of kayaks, surfboards, snorkels and fins are all free for you to use during your stay here. The beach itself does appear to be a favorite among families, so if you have kids, your kids won't have trouble finding other kids to play with. There's great snorkeling right on the beach as well, which I will discuss in more detail later. There is an awesome restaurant overlooking the ocean, serving great local dishes, which I think you must try. Whilst the resort doesn't advertise it, Serendipity does come across as an eco resort, with them doing a great job keeping their carbon footprint low without destroying much of the nature around it. It's a great choice for families, or if you just intend to spend a lot of time hanging around, not doing much. Now, I could tell you that there's a ton of things to do here, and it's true. There's heaps of tour operators that's more than willing to take your money and take you fishing, snorkeling, hiking at nearby islands. It is a bit more touristy than I perhaps imagined Koh Lipe to be. While it's not as developed as Bali Island, it's no doubt Thailand. So if you're taking your kids here, you inevitably have to answer questions like What's cannabis? <laughs> Personally, to really appreciate Koh Lipe, I think it's worth just chilling and not do much here at all. But when you do feel like doing something, no problems. Need a bit of retail therapy? Sure. Walking Street is a pretty decent stretch of street with plenty to offer, including 7-Eleven, bubble tea, overpriced cafes, even Starbucks is here too. What about very good local seafood at very reasonable prices? We had a pretty good experience just randomly popping into places recommended by our hotels. I suggest you do the same as well. Perhaps the thing that I would suggest that you must do here at Hako Lipe is snorkeling. Especially if you're not a strong swimmer, Koh Lipe has the easiest beach to go snorkeling. Why? Let's take a look back at this map. See the lighter shade on the map here? The beach is shallow. I believe this is the reason why Sunrise Beach or Koh Lipe in general is so popular. Its shallow water is full of corals. Not all of them colorful. But the main thing? It is possible to simply walk around any part of these shallow water Stick your head in and see wonderful sea life beneath the water. Stingrays, check. Nemo, check. Parrotfish, check. Swordfish, check. And don't just take my word for it. So many fish here to get, guys. It's really good. It's so cool. And see these two islands here on the map? It is absolutely possible to just walk over when it's low tide. The keyword here, low tide. If there's one thing you might want to pack for this type of snorkeling, are these so-called water shoes. Unless you like walking on prickly seashells, it's a good idea to wear one. The only other tip here is that Nemo's or most of the small fish here ain't scared of you. They will prick you if you come too close. I can't blame them really. 
I'm sure they're angry enough seeing tourists poking their head in at their front door, intruding their privacy every day. Anyway, as I've stressed a couple of times, Kolipe is still sleepy enough that you can still come here, sit around, and just not do much. I hope it doesn't turn into Bali anytime soon, but I can certainly see it heading that way. In the meantime, I hope you'll come to Kolipe and enjoy it before it's too late. If you found this video useful, please hit the like, subscribe button, and turn on the notification bell. I'll see you in the next video.